Welcome back to Vintage Camera Digest. Today we're having a shootout between the tiny Pentax Auto 110 and the massive Pentax 6x7. It'll be fun, so stick around. I thought it would be fun to do a side-by-side -side comparison shoot with the Pentax 6x7 and the Pentax Auto 110. I think you can consider both of these extremes when it comes to size. The Pentax 6x7 is one of the largest SLRs that utilizes the standard SLR shape. And I'm going to guess that the Auto 110 is the smallest interchangeable lens SLR ever produced. Now there have been other SLR designs that were made for the 110 cartridge films. Minolta had two SLRs that used it, but neither of those had interchangeable lenses. But if you know of another, be sure to let me know in the comments. So each of these cameras will get their own episode to talk about the details, but I thought it would just be fun to do this first. So we're headed to downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee for the shoot. So let's hit it. So today I'm back in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I am currently at the Chattanooga Choo Choo. You can't really see the sign from here, uh, but you might get to see the trains. Uh, you used to could come up here and uh, stay overnight in one of the sleeper cars, sort of like a little hotel. I guess you can still do that. But anyway, I have two cameras out here today. They're both Pentax SLRs. One is the Pentax 67, and the other one is the Pentax Auto 110. So I've got big and small, sort of the extremes. Uh, so the plan is to take the same photos with both, or as close to it as I possibly can. In the 110, I have the Orca 110 black and white from Lomography, and I've got T-Max 400 in the 67. So let's go in search of our first shot. All right, so the first shot I've got, let me get the choo-choo sign there in the back. I don't know if you can see all of it. Uh, so first I'm gonna shoot with the 67. I've got the 150 millimeter lens on. I need to meter this up with a spot meter and see what we've got. Got to remember that I've got ISO 400 in the 67. So let's go, it'll allow me to shoot some faster shutter speeds. All right. All right, so I found a shadow and highlight point, so let's make this work. Mem memory and average. So one two fiftieth of a second at F11 is what I'm going to do. One two fifty at F11. A little bit. I'll do a horizontal too. So since I shot with the 150 on the 67, I'm gonna shoot with the 50 on the Pentax Auto 110. It's a little bit tighter, not much. And I'll go horizontal for one, two. We gotta, we gotta wind it twice. There's one problem with this Pentax 67. Well, there may be more than one problem, but this is one that I'm really uh, noticing this morning. Is that when I stick the camera in the bag, the uh, mirror up switch gets triggered, and then when I pull it out of the bag, the mirror's up. And there's no way to put the mirror down in the Pentax 67 until you fire the shutter. So I have wasted two shots of a 120 roll so far having to deal with the mirror lockup switch. So that's probably a design feature that you can't lower the mirror until you make the shot. Uh, I haven't run into that before with the Pentax 67, but I've never had it in this bag and I can see exactly what the problem is. So um, we'll do the best we can. Uh, so much for this being a one-to-one -one shot. I will base it on however many shots I've got in the Pentax 67, and then we'll just have fun with the Auto 110. There's a lit Chattanooga sign right there, and I'm gonna get some, uh, I'm gonna get a wide angle shot of that. So I'll have the 18 millimeter on the Pentax 110 and the 55 on the 67. So let's go. All right, first shot with the 110. So I can't get the entire sign in. Let's see. 
All right, so let's try it with the 55. So let's just meter it. So that's my shadow. There's my highlight. F4 at 1 250th of a second. Or let's go 1 125th 1 of a second at F5.6. 5.6 at 1 125th of a second. All right. So for this shot, we've got the train and we've got the sign that says Chattanooga Chushu right there. So I'm thinking some little short, uh, some tie in composition there. So I'm thinking probably with the normal lenses on each of these. Now let's meter it while I'm here for the 67. So 1 1 25th at 5.6. So what have I got here? That's exactly what I was thinking I was gonna get. I am gonna have to shade the lens and holding this with one hand. Now, Pentax 110. Let's find the normal lens here. Well, this stuff is so tiny, it's almost like a toy. You know, I can see the interest in making a camera like this because you can put the whole thing in your pocket nearly about. All right, let's move on. Let's find something. I don't want to do all the shots here. Uh, but let's look around just to make sure we don't have anything else. we got a shot here with the lantern lights on the end of the bulb is lit. Hopefully you can shoot this so that you can see the lit part of the bulb so that it looks lit. We will see. I'm going to shoot with the normal ends on both of these. I'm just going to look for a middle gray. 1 1 25th of a second at f8. Let's also do one at 5.6. I'm ready to move on. Go find another spot downtown. See you there. So behind me is the Tivoli Theater. It's got a wonderful old sign. I'm gonna get a couple shots out of this. Uh, there may be more than one here. I think I see at least a couple. Uh, I've shot this sign before, but you know, I can always do it again because it might be even better, you know? All right. Uh, shooting with a normal lens on both cameras though. So first of all, we're gonna do the Pentax 67. Let's meter this up. It's all in sort of the shade here, so there's not a whole lot of variation. Yeah, 1 250th of a second at five, six and a half. All right, let's get the 110 out. Again, we're looking at the normal lens. It's got a split image range finder feature. Well, this thing's like tiny to hold compared to the 67. I mean, we are talking about extremes here. All right, let's walk down just a bit because I want to get a different angle of the side. So the shot I'm thinking about, shooting horizontal and getting this front side. Got the normal lens on, so let's do that first. Try to get it lined up symmetrical here. All right, so let's get the shot with the 67. All right, try to go for symmetry. 
We got some shade on this side, so I'm gonna shoot it from this angle. First with the 110, and I've got the 50 millimeter on there. I don't want to shoot this at 5.6, just like we did the previous. One two fiftieth of a second. 5.6, and I just hit the mirror up button. I've not had this issue before with this camera, so I don't know what the deal is. I'm gonna have to put some electrical tape over it so I don't accidentally trip it. It's beginning to annoy me. All right, so behind me, I have the dome building. I shot this before. I was out here with the Nikon in 2020 last spring. Uh, and shot this, but from a further distance. So this is a little bit tighter composition. I'm gonna shoot with the uh, 67 first. I've got the 150 millimeter on. I'm going to shoot at one five hundredth of a second at F16. Got a nice horizontal composition out of this. All right, so let's put the, I've uh, got the 50 millimeter on the 110. This is a little bit tighter. And the 67. All right, before I move on to something else, I like this. So we've got this nice rusty surface texture here. We've got some really direct light coming in, creating some nice shadows, so it should emphasize that texture. So I want to shoot this uh, with the normal lenses. And with the Pentax, with the 67, I'm going to have to use the uh, smallest extension tube because the focusing, the minimum focusing on that lens is not super. Uh, let's do with the 110 first. While I'm at it, let me get a slightly different angle. I don't have any control over the depth of field, so I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna get. That will be interesting. All right, so let's mirror this. That's my shadow area. Here's my highlight. Average, so one one thousandth at 5.6. Sounds good, because I do not want a ton of depth of field on this. Right, let's see, can I get one just like we did the uh, 110, maybe? Let's see. Got a few shots left, so let's find, a, let's find us how we're uh, finish this up. Go ahead and take the extension tube off. Cause that will just cause me problems later when I am trying to figure out why I can't focus to infinity. All right, so behind me, we've got this old church entrance. The entrance is all that's left of it, but they decided to keep that and the steeple. But we got some nice masonry here. Uh, some interesting texture, some shape. Uh, I'm tired of shooting into the sun, but that's what we've got. So first up, we've got the Pentax 67. Normal lens. Try to block as much of this. I'm shooting at 2 50th of a second at 5.6. All right, next up. The Auto 110. Again, I've got the normal lens on this just to see, you know, the difference between the two. Like, of course, I'm expecting a difference, but how much difference, right? And we're comparing 110 film to six by seven centimeter negatives. All right, is there anything else here? Same shot, sort of. I think I've got one more shot on the Pentax 67. And I know exactly where I'm going to shoot that. So behind me is the Moon Pie General Store. So if you don't know what a Moon Pie is, you need to Google that. 
there's nothing better than a hot summer day with a coca-cola and a moon pie but anyway made right here in chattanooga i've already metered it and we are at 1 25th of a second at f4 That's all for the 67. I have no idea how many shots I've got left on the 110. Not many, but probably more than I had here. So shooting that up too. Put the wide angle on this, the 18. I said I was gonna put the wide angle on, but I didn't, I put the 70. I haven't shot much with this. So this is probably like about a 300 millimeter and 35 millimeter. All right, that wraps it up. Well, that was a fun shoot. It was pretty weird shooting with the huge 6x7 and then picking up the 110. I don't know if the 110 made the 6x7 seem larger or if the 6x7 made the 110 seem tiny, but the 110 is no doubt a very small camera. I don't have very large hands, but it was still a bit hard to manage. Pentax sold an auto winder for it that added some additional heft and made it easier to hold, so that may be something that's worth getting. As for the 6x7, I thought it did really well for being handheld for all of those shots. There were several photos where I used 1 125th of a second, and they all seemed to be just fine. The big issue, of course, was accidentally tripping the mirror lockup switch when I put the camera in the bag. So I'm going to have to use a piece of gaff tape to cover that switch when I use it with that bag again. Now I'll put together a couple of slides just to get an idea of how the two cameras and the two films compare. In the first one, I think it's sort of easy to see that the 6x7 negative on the left has better resolution, but it's not significantly better at this size. There's obviously a difference in the film stocks. The T-Max 400 on the left has a good range of tones. The Lomography Orca 100 is more contrasty and seems a little muddy in the mids, but the fact is that if you want to shoot 110 film in black and white, I'm pretty sure this is your only choice. If we punch in though, we can really begin to see the differences. The resolving power you get with a big piece of film is always gonna win out over a tiny piece of film. And I mean, look at the size difference here. Well, that about wraps up this episode. Like I said, I'll have a standalone episode for each of these in the near future and we'll get more into detail with them. So consider this just a teaser for the Pentax Auto 110 and the Pentax 6x7. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please leave a like and share it with your film photography friends and let me know what y'all think in the comments. Also, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss any of the upcoming episodes. Not only will we be talking about each one of these cameras again, we've got one coming up on the Zeiss Icon Super Iconta, which is a 6x9 format shooter, and Zenobia R, which is a 6x5 format shooter and a camera I know very little about. So it'll be a lot of fun to dig in with this one. I will see you next time. <laughs>